Hello, hello beautiful people. Thank you so much for coming back to one more course of Microsoft. Today we are going to be uh, learning Windows Server 2022. We are going to go over this version. We are going to go around. We are going to see some compare with the, with the previous versions. And also we are going to go through the main, like the main basic functions that you normally can do with Windows Server. Um, for that, we are going to do an installation from the beginning. We are going to download an ISO image, then just um, go through the installation process. And then we are going to go through the setup of these roles. So the first step is we are we're going to download the image and then I'm going to show you how to create the USB tool just in case you need it. We are going to go through the process to create partitions, installing Microsoft Server 2022, adding four role, uh, role for Hyper-V, creating virtual switch, um, create virtual machines for the main controller, how to add DNS, the ACP roles and also how to map drives and deploy printers. So I just want to say thank you so much one more time for coming to this course. Hopefully this is going to be helpful for you. Hopefully this is going to add some values to your daily tasks. This is going to add values to your career. And I hope you are going to enjoy this course. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Hello, hello, beautiful people. So let's continue with the, with the Windows Server 2022 installation and setup process. So the first step is we're going to go through the website. Uh, we are going to go out there into the to the internet and then just download an ISO image from Microsoft site and then we are going to create a USB tool. For that, let me show you the next step. So the first step is uh, I always like to open any browser in private mode, just uh, just something that I like. So let me just type here, uh, download uh, Windows Server 2022 ISO, uh, ISO image. And then it's going to take us, let's go here into Microsoft uh, Evaluation Center. And then we are going to choose a uh, 64 edition. Then probably it's going to ask, for, oh, well, it didn't ask for anything. It went straight to the download site. It's going to take around three minutes. So let me just, um, let me just stop the video and then um, just continue once it's fully downloaded. As we can see now, the file is fully downloaded. So let me just click here into the folder and then drag this location into here. And I see, and I just noted that I had already downloaded first. So let me just cut this and then let me just put it here into this one. So now we know that it's going to be on this folder that is called server course. Um, so the next step is we need to install the Hyper-V role on the computer. Um, so for that, let me just go to control panel and then um, we are going to go into here, into programs, turn on Windows feature. And I have to mention that to have this option, you need to have Windows Pro license or um, I think it's Pro. Yeah, I know that if it is Pro, then you have this option. Um, but if it is Home, you don't have this option. Yep. So let me just select that. Let me just click on OK. And then it's going to go through the installation process for the Hyper-V role. This is going to take a few seconds. And probably I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to reboot the computer. Yes, that is correct. So let me just pause the video. And then um, we are going to retake in a new video as soon as the computer is back. Well, as we can see now, the computer is back. So let's uh, double check and take a look at the role. And it should be there by now. So let me just go here, go into here. Okay. And yep, it's definitely there. So let me just cancel that. And now let's call the Hyper-B role. So Hyper-B role, as we can see now, it's right here. Let me drag it to this screen. Uh, no, this is not what I'm looking for. Let me just go into here and then type Hyper-V. So there it is, Hyper-V Manager. So now the first step we are going to do is we are going to create. So let me just give you the small story. This is a computer, just a regular computer. But if you have Windows 10 Pro, 
you can install the Hyper-V role on your computer as if you were going to use it on a server. So you don't have to download VirtualBox or like Hyper-V or like VMware Player or anything like that to create virtualization on your own computer. Because if you have Windows 10 Pro, you can do this. You can just download the Hyper-V role and then create virtual machines on your computer. Of course, you need to have enough memory in order to be able to do that. But I'm missing something here because I mentioned that I was going to show you how to create the virtual um, the USB bootable because now we are going to need that one in the next few seconds for the server that I have. So for that, let me just open one more time. Um, let me go here and then just download Rufus. This is a really good utility to create um, to create USB drives bootable and they work like really, really good. So let me just go here and then download. Yep, that one is fine. That's going to take a few seconds because it's a super small utility. Let me just open that. It's asking me for authorization. So let me just go here and let me just minimize this and also minimize this. And I have my USB drive that is plugged in 64 bits. Now let me just go ahead and select the ISO image unit. I put it on the server course. So let me go here. And then very important, very important is if you leave it on GPT, I have seen this several times. When you boot it up, when you select on the server to boot up from the drive, the server says that you need to change it to MBR and then BIOS UFC SM, CSM. Because I have tried on GPT format and it doesn't work. So I know for sure that it has to be on MBR. So let me just click on start and then, um, well, and also we have the option to create a local account with username. No, we don't want to do that. Remove requirement for, yeah, that's fine. So let me just, yep, it says that it's going to delete any information that is on the drive. That's fine. That's completely fine. So we are going to leave this running in the back. And then at the same time, we are going to create a new virtual machine. So let me just create a new virtual machine which is going to be like this. Let me just put on this one server, for example. Click on next generation one. Yep, that one is fine. Memory, let's put uh, 8 gigs. 8,000. Oh, we're going to put 8,000. Oh, it doesn't allow. 8,000. Well, let's put... Um, uh, that is extra inch. Why does it wait? Oh, I'm sorry. The startup memory. So the startup, let's put 1024. 10. 24. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, let's leave it not connected for now. The default drive, let's put it in 100 GB. And then let's leave that location. Let's just click on next. Here we need to attach the ISO image that we just download. So let me just go to server course and then let's click on next and then let's click on finish. And here we have a new virtual machine. Let me just double check everything. Memory. Yeah, the RAM, let's put it in 96. So that's going to be 8 gigs. Minimum RAM 512, yeah, that's fine. So just click on OK. Virtual processor is going to be only one. Server is going to be, uh, yeah, the drive is fine. And also the image, the ISO image is attached to the DVD drive. So let me just click on Start. And if I make a right click and then click on connect, you're going to be able to see what it's doing actually. So let me just drag this to here. Okay. So let's click on next. Install now. This is basically the same procedure as, 
as if you were going to install Windows 10. The interesting part is that this is happening on my regular computer. It's not happening on a server um, at the moment. So let me just click on, let's choose desktop experience because otherwise we're going to have just call. So Windows Server 2022 standard evaluation desktop experience. Let's click on next. We accept the license. Yes. Let's click on custom. Yeah. This is the drive that we created before. Just click on apply. Yep that's fine and then click on next and this is gonna be like super quick <laughs> um, well it's supposed to be super quick so at the same time let me take a look at the drive how's it going so the ISO um, the bootable drive it's moving on as mentioned before, this bootable drive is going to be used on the physical server that I have next to me. And then we are going to install Windows Server in that server. The reason that I'm showing you here on the virtual environment, it's because I don't have any way to show you how it is going to happen on the physical server. But it's a, what I'm going to do on the physical server is exactly what I just did here. The only thing is that I'm going to boot it up from the USB drive that I'm creating. So that's basically, that's going to be the only difference. So let me just pause the video and then just retake it when it's on the finish up. Well, it looks like this was faster than what I thought. I just went away for my coffee. And now that I came back, I see that it's already booting up. So let's take a look at the USB drive. USB drive is done. Let me just click on close. And then... Um, it's getting ready for the final part of the Windows Server installation. So that's going to take just a few more seconds. And just a few more seconds. Well, it looks like it is going to be more than a few seconds. Huh. Okay, finally, almost done. It's just rebooting one more time. see if we can detach the ISO image yeah we can detach and the next time it's not gonna uh, next time it's not going to ask to press any key to boot from the drive okay so it's fully loaded now so let me just put a simple password here nothing complicated then just click on finish and then let's just wait for a few more seconds yeah that's fine Okay, I see something that is coming up. And here we are. So the first step is let's put that date and time on the proper time zone. We want to make sure that it's on the, on the proper time zone. So let me just click here. Yep, 
that's fine. Um, let's take a look at the version that is running. So we are running Windows Server 2022 version 21H2. So that means that there are a few updates available that we can install. Um, let me just close, close this for now and also close this. And let's go to File Explorer. So let's see how is the machine looking. So the virtual machine, and as mentioned, this is running on my computer. This is a virtual machine. Name, 8 gigs of RAM. Um, you know what surprised me? That is not, the speed is not really bad. So just in case there is an emergency or something like that, let's set server goes down, hardware is broken or something like that. We can just, we, we should be able to create a virtual machine and then install Windows Server on that computer and then just keep it running for until you get the replacement or until you get whatever is broken. Let me go here, take a look at the drive. Yep. So the drive is 100, yeah, 99.3. That makes sense. And then the plan now, it's, um, I'm going to shoot this one down. So let me just go here and then shoot down. Yeah, that's fine, any plan. And then I'm going to take that USB drive that I was creating before. I'm going to plug it on my physical server that is next to me and then do exactly what I just did here, do the installation and then RDP to that server. Let me just work on that and then I will retake the video once I'm done with the installation. Um, and then I will see you in the next video. Hello, hello, beautiful people. Thank you so much for continuing with the learning process for Microsoft Server 2022. So as you can see now, this is the server that I was installing physically with the USB that I created previously. So, and it's right now, it's ready. Let me just maximize the screen. Now you can see everything on the screen. Oh, actually, let me see. Can I make it bigger? I don't think that I can make it any bigger. This is the maximum that it does. So let me just go into here and then click on start. So the first step is, um, let's actually take a look at the Windows distribution version. So this is uh, WinBear um, 21H2 build in build 2348. I think there is an update available for this one. So if I go here, uh, updates, security updates yep there is an update available and also there is 21h 21h2 so let me just install now we can leave that running in the back let's run a few things here let me uh click on uh, let me just put this hidden yep that's gonna make it look better and also we don't we need to show the taskbar okay so let's see what actually are the resources on this server make a right click and then go to properties um, so we are seeing that this is it has 16 gigs of ram it's a it's an i5 6500 it's not too bad so let's put a proper name let's uh let's just rename it let's put uh this is gonna be um core server okay actually hyper b hyper b server so that's the name okay we are not going to reboot yet but it's gonna ask yep just we start later so let me just go back to here and let's see if we can add one of the roles so let me go to server manager and the first role that we need to add is actually hyper b role so let's go here and then let's go to add a role yep that's fine just click on next yep that's completely fine It's going to take a few seconds and now let's go and select Hyper B role. Destination server has a pending restart. Oh, we might have to restart the server and then and then come back. Let's see. Okay. 
virtual machine require virtual switch to, com to communicate. Um, we have two network interfaces. Let me actually make sure that it recognizes both because I have two network interfaces on this server. Yep. So one is connected right now. Let's actually do this. So this one is going to be the internet. And this one is going to be the management. Management. Okay. Now we have two network interfaces. Let me see. This one is taking. Okay. 1013. Let's actually put an static IP address on the other one. And let's not put gateway for now. So let me just put like, let me run a ping to see if this IP address is free. Uh, pin 14. Oh, what was that? Well, it looks like it is free. So let me just put that one. Let me turn. 255, 255, 0. Okay. And now I also need to connect this interface. So let me just close here and also close here and close here. So let me just click on next. Allow this server to send and receive live migration virtual machines. If we have like some other server or like any Yes, any other server, and we want to send or receive um, compute like like a virtual machine that is running, and then do live migration. We just have to select that. Live migration means that that the computer is like in hot mode. We don't have to shut it down. We can just do the migration. Okay, let me just click on next, next, restart destination. Now let me just click on install. That's going to take a few seconds. And also, let me see how are the updates doing. Okay. 100%. Okay. It looks like this one is almost done. And the other one is pending for restart. Okay, let me just, I'm going to pause the video and then just continue once it's fully done at the end. Okay, as we can see, the installation was completed, but it looks like it failed. It looks like there are some errors on the installation. I'm not sure if it is because um, there was a pending reboot or because there were some updates running at the same time. So let me see what it says. Uh, specify server file. As detail, there is not too much. Um, there is not too much information here. So, the first step is let me close everything. Let me take a look at the updates, and then let's just reboot. Let's just reboot it, and then just try one more time once it's back. So let me just do a quick reboot, and then I will see you on the next video. Well, I actually didn't have to cut the video, so let me just try to connect to the server now that I see that it came back. Uh, let's see. Yep, I see that it's coming back. And let's see how it's the HyperV role, if it was installed or if it was not installed. So let me just go to Server Manager. And let's go to Tools. And actually, I see that the role is here. So we should be fine then. Now, if I go to the Hyper-B role, let me see what are the options here. So Hyper-B server, yeah, there are no, um, there are no virtual machines yet. So the next step that we are going to do is uh, we are going to create a virtual switch. And then that virtual switch is going to be connected to the interface that we showed before, that it's uh, the management, which is this one. Um, well, I also need to connect this interface because it's disconnected right now. 
and then that's going to provide internet connection or network connection to the VM, to the virtual machine. Um, so for that, let's start with that. Let's um, new virtual machine. So we're going to go right here. Yep. Uh, actually, let me take a look at the space on the drive, how much space I have. Hmm. Okay. So I think that I have one partition that I didn't assign it when I was installing the drive. Let me go to manage. Okay. And here, let me go to uh, computer management. Let me also click on this one. Now that this is here, let me go to device manager and then this management. Okay, yep, there is one part here that I didn't assign it because I was thinking that that's going to be for the virtual machines. Um, so this is going to be D and then let's put data on that one. So we know that anything that is going to be running on the Hyper-V is going to be hosted on that, on that partition. Okay, it's formatting and allocating that space. Normally, it take a few seconds. It shouldn't take too long. Okay. okay, we see now that that partition is ready. So let me just close this. Now let's uh, let's click on new virtual machine so this is going to be um domain controller let's call this one like this domain let's call it dc yep just dc the next generation one yeah that one is fine so this one how much memory do we have on this server we have 16 right so since it is going to be only one virtual machine for now, I think we can add, we can create that one and assign. Um, so this one is going to be 1024, the startup memory, but we can assign 8 gigs. And not connected for now, that's fine. Um, the location is going to be the data partition. So let me just create a folder here, VMs. PMS. Okay, select folder. And then let's assign, uh, let's put 60, 60 GB. And then if later on we want to assign another virtual machine, we still have a space for that. Okay, the installer. I don't think that I copy the installer. I think that I, that it's still on this, on this drive. And I think the installer is still on the USB drive on the computer. And it's actually, yep, it's actually here. So let me just copy this over to this. So let me just create a folder here. There's going to be installers. Installers. And that's going to take some time because it's throat RDP. Okay, in the meantime, let's um, continue creating the VM. We can just attach the installer later. Let me just click on next, finish. Now let's edit that virtual machine. Let's make sure that we have the right amount of memory on that one. So this is going to be uh, a Jigs. Yep. And then in the meantime, at the same time, let me just connect the second interface. So the second interface, it's, it's connected now. So let me take a look here. Um, I think it's a slow responding. Uh, 
So let's go to Hyper-B switch, virtual switch manager. Let's create an external virtual switch manager. Why an external? Because we need to have internet connection on this computer. If we choose internal, then it's going to be only between the VMs. And if it is private, it's going to be like super restricted. So it's going to be external, create virtual. And then it's going, it's going to ask on which interface is going to be connected. So we know that since now both are connected, uh, I wish I could see that. Since now both are connected, um, I really want to choose the second interface, and I'm pretty sure, and I'm pretty sure is this one. This is the second interface that I just connected. Allow management operating system to share this network drive, this network adapter. Yeah, that's fine. I don't think the copy process is going to be interrupted because as mentioned, that's, that's on the second interface. Um, well, it looks like it was interrupted. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. You should be able to retake in a few seconds. Okay, and also let's put a fancy name here. Let's put something like B LAN switch. So we know now that we have a virtual switch. Okay, we, I'm gonna have to copy that later one more time. So let me go here into the interfaces. Um, so the PCIe. The Ethernet real okay, so both are realtic, huh? So the one that I use, the one that I want to use for management is this one: the PCIe, PCIe GVE, PCIe GVE. Why? Because this one is the one that I assign it the static IP address. Yeah, the fourteen. Uh, This is the one. Okay. Uh, it should allow me to click on OK in the next few seconds. So, <laughs> okay, so it disconnected me one more time. That's fine. That's completely fine. Okay, so now we know that if we turn on this computer, well, as soon as I install Windows Server on this one and then turn it on, it's going to take an IP address from that, from that interface. In the meantime, let me just continue copying the installer, which is going to take some time. Um, let me just minimize here. Just go here one more time. Copy. Let's go back to here. The installer, and then um, I will see you in the next video throughout the installation process on the VM once this copy is done. Yep, because it's going to take a few minutes. Okay, so um, let me just continue copying this installer, and then I will see you in my next video. Thanks. Hello, hello everyone. Thank you so much for continuing with the Microsoft learning process for Windows Server 2022. So just to recap and just to make sure we are on the same page on what we have done and what is next. So what I have done so far is download Server 2022, install Hyper-B role on my PC, Windows. Um, the license on the Windows where you want to install it has to be Windows 10 Enterprise Pro or Education. If not, you can install the Hyper-B role. Then after that, I create a virtual machine on my PC, install Server 2022. Um, well, I first install it on the on the virtual machine that I created on my computer, and then I install it um, on a small server on a small physical server that I have, and then um, add the Hyper-B role. 
So now that we have the Hyper B role, and also I was copying the installer into that um, into that server. Now we are going to create um, a new virtual machine, which I already created, and then we are going to install server 2022 on that virtual machine. So that's going to be the next step. As we saw in the previous video, um, I created the VM, it's called DC, but I haven't installed anything yet. So let me, for example, try to start it. And then let me see what it says. I guess it's going to say that there is no operating system. Yep, definitely. There is no operating system. So let me just close it. I'm going to shut it down. So make a right click and then turn it off. Um, and then I was also copying the installer. Um, I was copying the installer from my computer to here. Yep, I see that it's here. So now let me just go here, make a right click and then settings. We are going to attach that ISO image on um, on the DVD drive. So we're going to go here and then select the drive. We're going to go right here, install it and then select the drive. So now it's going to be apply. OK. And now let's put it up. Now connect. OK, we can see that now it's putting up from that ISO drive. So this should be like super quick. This shouldn't take too long. Uh, yep, this is looking good. Install now. Okay, it's gonna take a few seconds to show us the license agreement. Oh, actually the version. So we want to install Server 2022 the standard evaluation, but let's choose the desktop experience. If not, it's gonna be only um, it's not going to have like desktop environment. So we have to make sure that this is the one we choose. Let me just click on next. Okay. I select the license agreement. Just click on next. Um, custom. That's the drive. Let's just click on next. And then it's going to take it. It's going to take it all. Okay. And this is going to take a few seconds, probably like a couple of minutes, but it shouldn't be too long. So let me just pause the video and then come back once it's done. And as we can see, just a few minutes later, it's almost done. Just installing the last updates. And it should be rebooting in the next few seconds. Let me just click on restart. And then, yep, we don't want to press any key. Otherwise, it's going to go through the ISO process one more time. And then is putting up well this is looking good it's actually amazing how fast it is to install in a, in a bm and i just added 8 gb of ram and well the drive is super small which is 60 gbs um, because i don't have too much space on that drive the whole drive is actually uh, let me see actually manage yep let's go back to here and then let's go to uh, computer management and then disk management it's actually just 223 yeah it's super small very small but it's enough for what we need to do yeah just click on reconnect just exit here okay it's putting up Just a few more minutes. Okay, so let's choose a simple password. And then just click on finish. And then let me just double click, double click on the top and then it shows like this. Just yeah. okay. Let me just send um, control alt delete. If we press on this icon, as you can see, this is gonna send control alt delete. So let me just enter the password. Okay, and it's putting up. It's putting up. Okay, 
So once that I'm here, um, I like to do a few things. For example, uh, where did it go? Okay, there it is. So I like to do a few things. For example, I like to, let me just close these. Um, I like to not to show these. Let me just do some custom things. And then, um, actually go to the display settings let's see what is the maximum that we can choose here okay this is looking great so let me just keep keep settings yep now I can see the whole screen which is really good let me just go here okay okay and now Just right click on this PC, see how it looks. Um, let's change the name. Yep, so we're going to change it. Let me just put DC. I want to call it DC. Okay, and then let's reboot it, restart now. And then in the meantime, let's go back to the Hyper-V. And then let's see how is the virtual switch. Remember the virtual switch that we created before? So let's go back to here into virtual switch settings. It's actually um, Hyper-V settings, virtual switch manager. It's actually this one. So. Um, is connected on the GV family controller. Let's take a look at that interface and actually make sure that that's that is on, that is connected, that there is a wire. Yeah, bill and switch management. Uh, yeah, and this is the internet. Okay, so now let's go back to here. Let's go to settings and let's actually tell like, hey, you're going to be connected into this switch. Let me go to network settings and then we're going to select the switch. Just click on apply, click on OK. And let's actually test it. Let's see if there is internet connection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have internet connection on the PM. Yep. MSN, yeah, definitely we have internet connection on the VM, which is really good. So, no, actually, wait, I'm confused. I didn't went into the VM. This is the VM. No. Let me actually close it. Okay, now let me connect to it. Let me send control and delete. I was confused. I was testing the internet connection on my on the Hyper-V server, not on the VM. Yep, it discovered the connection. Now let's actually test it on the Hyper-V. I'm sorry, on the VM, the one that we rename as server. So let's see how it looks. Send it in. Come on. Okay. Okay. Yep, just continue without signing in. And yeah, we can set that is internet on the VM. Okay. So let me just close this and then go back to here. So just to make it clear, let me minimize the virtual machine. I'm back now on the Hyper-V. So the trick for this, 
the trick for this and the reason that I'm going to clarify this is because this is a common question that I normally see. So the key for the is we need to make sure that the VM is connected to a hyper to a virtual switch and the virtual switch that I created before is this one, the VLAN switch. And that VLAN switch is using because I have two network card interfaces on this server. So the network card interfaces is this one, which is the internet connection for the server, and this one, which is the second um, network car that it's on the server. And then when I created the switch, this one was created because this one wasn't there. And then this one, I think this is the one that I assigned the IP. No, I think this is the one that I assigned the IP. Um, but I don't think that I can see it. Let me see. Status. Yeah, this is the internet connection. Status. Yep, 223. So I remember that I assigned the IP address on this one, but since the switch was created, in theory, the switch, the virtual switch is based on this network card interface. Okay, so the most important thing is that we have internet connection now on the on the VM. So the second thing is we need to create another VM. So let me see how much memory we actually have. We are using eight on this one. And the whole Hyper-V server has, the whole Hyper-V server has, I think it's 16, yep, 16. So we need to create a Windows 10 machine, but for that, I don't think that I actually has half more space. Uh, I don't think that I actually have more space. Okay. Because the next is we need to create, we are going to set up a domain controller on the Hyper-V server. Oh no, I'm sorry, under the DC server, which is this one. So we are going to set up a domain controller and then we are going to add the DACP role and then the next step is we are going to join a computer into that domain and then we are going to create a few users and we are going to do some more cool things but for that i need another windows 10 machine to add into this domain controller so let me go back here let's actually add a role I went back to here. Okay. Yeah. Let me just make sure that I'm connected into the right one. This young hyper B. Yep. This young hyper B is this one. This young hyper B. Yes, it's this one. So let me go back to here. We're going to add a role. Okay. It's going to be next. Next. Yep. That's the right one. DC. Okay, and then we are going to choose um, Active Directory Active Directory Domain Services No, Active Directory Domain Services Active Directory Federation Active Directory And as you can see on the 2022 is Active Directory Domain Services I was pretty sure that it was Active Directory Domain and Computer So let me just click on Add now let's just click on next. Let's leave everything as default. Yep. So that's going to install the framework. It's going to install group policy management. Microsoft Defender Antivirus. So it says that it's installed. Okay, let me just click on next. And then next. And restart destination server automatically if required. Yep, that's fine. That should be fine. Let me just click on yes and then install. The installation is going to take a few minutes. It shouldn't take too long. Once it's installed, we need to reboot and then promote it as domain controller. And that's going to happen in the next few seconds. Okay. Yeah, I don't think there is any need to pause the video because 
I have seen this and this is, well, I have seen this on other versions and it's, uh, it's been like super quick. Uh, just a few more seconds. No. Okay, configuration required. Installation succeeded on DC. View installation progress. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna do the reboot by itself. Just click on close. Configuration required installation succeeded on DC. Okay. It didn't ask me to reboot it. Promote this server to the main controller. Maybe I can do it without rebooting it. Um, let's see. So now that the role is installed, we need to promote it as domain controller. So it's gonna be add a domain controller to an existing domain. No, we don't need that. Add a new domain controller to an existing forest. No, add a new forest. Add a new, yep. So the root domain name is gonna be cascas.local. That's going to be the root domain. Let me just click on next. Um, the forest functional is going to be server 2016, Windows Server, yep. And then domain, uh, domain name, system DNS server, global, yep. Let's put the, put the password here. Just click on next. Verify the net bios name assigned to the domain and change if necessary. If it asks, we can just add cascas.net. Yeah, that's fine. Just click on next. Okay, and then just next one more time. So it's gonna go through the installation process well, is the promoted because the role is already installed. But what is it doing right now is that it's promoting the DC as the domain controller on the network. That means that if I try to join a domain, com a domain controller, if I try to join a computer to that domain controller, the domain controller is going to be like listening. Okay. Windows Server 2022 domain controller have a default for the security settings name allow cryptography algorithms comparable with Windows NT 4.0 that prevents weaker cryptography algorithm when establishing security channel sessions. That's completely fine. Um, this computer has at least one physical network adapter that does not have a static IP address. Yes, that is correct. I haven't set up a static IP address on this, on this computer, but that's completely fine. The recommendation is always to have an static IP address on on the domain controller, but that doesn't matter. Let me just click on install because anyway, it's gonna go through the installation process. Okay. Windows Server 2022 domain controller have a default for the security settings name. Yeah, that's basically what we read before. Uh, waiting for the NS installation to finish. This is probably gonna take a few more minutes. I have seen this, this process normally take like a little bit longer, not, not much, but take some more time. So let's see how it's gonna go. Okay. Okay, it's actually, it's actually done. You're about to be signed out the computer being restarted because Active Directory Domain Services was installed or removed. Yep, that's fine. Let me just click on close. And then it's gonna go to restart by itself. Okay, that's perfect. That's part of the plan. Shooting down services delivery. And you know what? In the meantime, let me go into the settings and remove that ISO drive. 
and then the next time that it reboot, it's not gonna it's not gonna try to boot from that IC drive anymore. Yep, and in theory, it's gonna be even faster. But as you can see, the rebooting process is like super quick. Okay, just a few more seconds. Just a few more seconds and should be up and running. Okay, applying computer settings. And just a few more seconds <laughs> and we should be up and running on this domain controller like it is taking just a few more seconds huh. okay and finally windows it's fully loaded so let's go back to here let's send control alt delete let me just send the password oh as you can see the signing process changed because now we have the domain and the user so let me go here and it's loading okay so we have the domain controller it's up and running let's see how is the active directory user and computers let me just open the DC role let me minimize that And I guess it's still running a few things in the back. It, it actually added the DNS role also. You know, it's a server 2022, but I think it's acting really well in a VM that only has eight GV of RAM and also that is running on this small server. Okay, so let me just leave this here, ping the taskbar. Now let me go back to here. And yeah, this is looking good. This is actually looking really good. Okay. Nice. So what I really like to do is um, I like to add some user and some computers, but for that, we need to get another computer running Windows 10, and then we can just add it to this domain controller. So in the meantime, let me just add a username. So let me go here, and then it's gonna be uh, user1. So the username is gonna be user1. And then let's choose user must change password and next level. Now let me take that out. Uh, let me just enter a password. Okay. Yep. So we have user one now. Let me see how it looks. Yep. We don't have any restriction or anything like that. Now. Let me just get another computer with Windows 10, add it to the domain, and then we can sign in with this username. Okay, I guess that's it for the domain controller installation. So let me just, let me see you on the next video, joining the computer to the domain and then starting session with this user that we just created. And I will see you on the next video. 
Hello, hello everyone. So right now we are going to continue with the process to join a computer to the domain and also test the user that we created before. So for that, we are going to go to the server and then, um, actually we don't have to go to the server. We just need to go to a computer running Windows 10 Pro and then add it to the domain. And then we can just sign in as the user. So let's do that. So for that, let's connect to that computer. Let me just remote connect to that computer. Let me actually find out what IP address is that computer taking. So computer is taking, let's see, 144, which is gonna be uh, this one. Okay. So the username for that one, I think is admin. And then let's see, yes. So that is the username and that is the password. So now we are connected to that computer that we are going to add to the domain. Let me go right here and then let me go into right here, this PC properties, and then we are going to advanced system protection. Let me go into here and then we are going to go to computer name change. So let's put, it's gonna be laptop, we can put a name, let's put laptop one. And then the domain is gonna be cascas. Let's actually put cascas.local. And then it's gonna take a few seconds to find the domain, ah, but it couldn't find it. So let's see why it couldn't find it. Let me just leave it with cascas. Or oh, it's actually cascas.local. Let's see. It's taking a few seconds, it's reading the network. Let's see, hopefully it's gonna find it. Okay, so it looks like it can find it on the network. So when this happens, we can try just, um, we have a trick to force the computer to find the domain controller. So for that, we need to do the following. Let me just go into the domain controller. Let me actually go first into the Hyper-V server. So Hyper-V, we know that is 10.0.0.13. Yeah, it's 13. I think it's 13. And then it's gonna be administrator. And then, let's see. No, it's not. Uh, let me actually find out what is the IP address Oh, but this is because I'm trying to remote into the Hyper-V from that computer. So let me, let me go back to my computer and then try to remote from here. So that computer is actually 13. Yeah, it's actually that one. Oh, the username is, yeah, it's admin and then, okay, there it is. So I'm connecting now to the Hyper-V. And actually, Hyper-V had a remote session open under the domain controller. So let me minimize this, minimize this. So we know the domain controller is 12. If we know that the domain controller is 12, let me close this session on the domain controller. So we are back on the Hyper-V now. Let me close the Hyper-V. Yep, that's fine. And now let me go back to the computer. So this is the computer. If we want to force the computer to find the domain controller, we can do this. Let me just go to network and then let me go to advanced, change advanced settings. So this is gonna be uh, properties and then let's add the primary DNS here. So this is gonna be the domain controller IP address. Okay, let's try that one more time. Cascas.local, it looks like there is something that I'm doing wrong. Cascas.local, maybe use Cascas. Um, yep, it find it. So I know here it's um, administ administrator. Okay. Let's see. Yep, I think it's gonna work. Normally this process is super quick. Um, but it's definitely not being as quick as I thought. 
I have done this so many times for all the other Windows version and it doesn't take probably take like oh there it is it normally takes like five ten seconds let's say that in this case it took like what like 20 so let me just click on ok click on ok close and then yep you know also um yep let's just restart now okay so we are back now on the on the hyper -B. so let me go here and then under the domain controller we should be able to see the computer now let me see if i go here into cascas and then let's go to computers and it's actually there yep laptop one so the first step is we're going to start a session as administrator on that pc and then we are going to start session as user one so let me minimize this. Let me go into remote desktop one more time. Okay. Now, um, but we have to connect in the following way. It's gonna be cascas.administrator and then password. Uh, yes. And then we are starting session as the domain administrator on that computer this is looking good this is actually really really good okay probably also it's gonna take a few seconds just to create the desktop and create like the first um set up on that one well actually that was quick okay now let's go into the settings let's actually take a look at the settings and see how it looks so it says that device name is laptop one computer is part of laptop one is the name and then cascas.local is the domain so the fully qualified name the the fudn is this one laptop one.cascas.local okay this is really good now if we do this this see i don't think there is anything because oh this is the default folders the net log and sys and sys ball let's actually go into that server and then create a folder that we can share so let me go back into here let me go back to here and then let's go into local disk we are going to create a folder that is going to be called data okay and then data is going to be shared on the network for now let me just click on share so it's going to be share permission yep it's going to be to everyone just just like that okay um i mean we can dig into permissions but that's um but we are going to go we're going to need some more time for that now if we do this we should be able to see the path so let me go back into that computer and then go into here and then DC yep and then we can see data so test testing folder so the next step that we are going to do in the next video is we're gonna, we are going to do two more things once we are going to map this folder as a network drive for a user for user one actually on this on this video we still need to sign in as the user so let me go into here um, let me actually enable a remote desktop and then select user and then it's gonna be a uh, user one um, so now user one can do remote desktop as you can see administrator has already access by default so that's why i was able to start a remote session as administrator and i didn't have to add it here because it was enabled by default for the administrator so let me just close here and then let's let me just disconnect from here yep sign out and now we are going to remote rdp into that computer one more time but now it's going to be as user one. 
Okay, I think that I put the wrong password. I think that I put the wrong password one more time, yeah. Okay, so let's go back into the server. Let's make sure that that's the password. Let me go into users. And then it's gonna be um, reset password. No. Unlocked. Okay, so now we have the new password set. Let me go back into that PC. Yep, now we should be able to sign in as the user, user one, on that PC. And we should be able to also to get into UNC path for the network um, and see that folder from the server. So let's see how it looks. It's taking a few more seconds, yep. And, I, and as we can see, now we are here. So let me go back into here. This is, yep, user one. And if I do this, DC, yes, I can see data. Do I have permission? I believe so. Because I put, yep, because I put uh, on permission, it was selected for everyone. So let's see, server, that is correct. So this is looking good. So as mentioned, on the next video, we are going to, um, we are going to create a group policy. We are going to add a printer and also we are going to map we are going to map this folder for the user one so that every time the folder starts session, then it's going to be available for him as a network drive. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in my next video. Hello, hello, everyone. As mentioned on the previous video, let's come to the, this is going to be the last part. Um, actually, I think we have, we still have one more video. Yep, so we need to work on this, and this is going to be group policy set up on my drive, and then we're going to do a printer deployment. So let's see how we can do that. Okay, so for that, we are going to connect to the Hyper-V, which is where I am right now. Let me just open the Hyper-V role, and then let me make sure that the DC is actually running. Actually, it is. So let me connect to the Hyper-V. And now we are on the Hyper-V. Let me send, uh, this is going to be uh, the admin password. Yep, and it's also now connecting to the Hyper-V. Uh, I'm sorry, to the DC. Yep, I shut it down. I properly shut it down, so it's going to show me that. And then we need to, we need to check a couple of things before creating GPO group policy. So the first thing is, let's take a look at Active Directory and see how it looks. That's gonna take a few seconds. I guess it's still loading a few things. Yep, let me just uh, minimize this, okay. So as we can see, we don't have any container here. We just have like the root domain. And when I said container, it's, for example, we can do, um, we can do this, for example, um, let's create an organizational unit. And then this organizational unit is going to be, is going to be called, just an example, servers and desktops, just an example. And then, yep, I like to leave that protect container from accidental deletion. Okay. So as you can see, this container now is visible under uh, the Cascas domain locker. So if I go to group policy, I should be able to apply a policy here. But since we just have one computer on the domain and also we just have one user, what we can do is apply the GPO at the root level. So let's do that. Let me go back to here and then let's go into um, group policy. So where is group policy? Group policy management. Let me maximize this. And then let's see how this looks. Let me just maximize here and also maximize here. Then come to the domain and then maximize here. And this is what I was referring before. 
like you can see this container this is the one that i just created so if we have any computer or any user there in theory we can create a group policy and link it there and then it's going to be applied to whatever is in that container but since as mentioned before we have everything we have the computer on the original container and the user is on the user's container let's just create the root the policy on the root domain so we are going to choose create the gpo in this domain and link it here because the other option is link an existing gpo this is if we already create the gpo and then um, we can just link it or for example we created we link it here on this one on on this one and then we want we decided to put it later at the root level so we just come here and then it's going to be link an existing gpo and then it's going to show that group policy so once that is once that's clarified let's let's actually move on so let's make a right click and then create a gpo in this domain and link it here we're going to call this uh users map drive because we need to be sure and it needs to be clear when everybody when anybody comes to the domain controller what is this group policy about so now that we have the the name set up properly let me just click on okay and then is right here yep you have selected a link a link to a group policy object except for changes in link property properties change you may here are globally are global to the gpo and will impact all other actions yep so basically what he's saying is that whatever we do here is going to impact um the root domain because it's linked at the root domain so once that it's set let me just make a right click and then select edit so that was right click and then edit we have two options that they look almost the same like computer configuration and user configuration we can create the policy per computer that means that it doesn't matter who's sign in into the computer the policy is going to be applied anyway but we don't want that because we want to have we want to have access based on the user so we are going to create a user configuration policy because that's what we need <clears throat> so now we are going to go to policies and then the next step is we're going to go to preferences once we are in preferences let's go to window settings <clears throat> And then it's very visible as you can see here there is the map drive so once we select the map drive we can just make a right click and then select new map drive but actually we can oh yeah and actually we can just click here and then map drive or yep just map drive okay and here we have to select a few details about the drive so i know we have a folder that was shared before um so let's see this see the folder that we shared before was called data testing folder yep so let's put data this is gonna be the network path okay let me just copy that and then that's gonna be right here on the location we can either paste it and i'm pretty sure we can actually browse it uh entire domain cascas uh, yeah anyway it's uh it's more easy just to copy and paste it. okay and then the next step is use first available starting at let's put um, the F drive let's actually take a look at the Windows server and see so we have C and T E F we have A C oh it's amazing that we still use a drive so that's A C D so let's choose F this is gonna be the F drive and now we are going to just click on apply 
and then click on OK. So this is going to be the drive. And then in theory, since this is at the top level and the user that we created before, it's right here on users, this policy um, is going to apply to that user because it's on there. Um, because um, as mentioned, the policy is at the root level and the container is under the root level. So now the next step is we are going to connect to that computer that we joined to the computer previously. We are going to sign in as the user one and then see if actually is taking that policy. So let's go to that computer. That computer IP address was, um, let me see, that was, I think it was 144. Yeah. Let's see if it was 144, user one. This is gonna be, uh, let's see. Yep, that was that was the computer that was user one. That wasn't the password. Yeah. Yep, user one. That's the password. And normally, when you set up a GPO, it normally takes like a few more seconds than usual because computer is trying to read the policies and do the setup of whatever the policy says that it's supposed to do. So as we can see, the policy is not there yet. What we can do to force it, we can either do two things. We can either do run and then right here, just type GP update force. This is gonna take a few seconds. It's gonna go through the process to update the policies. Oh. It looks like there is something. No. Uh, I think that I removed the domain controller from from the network drive settings. Uh, Yep, I think that I did. Yep, that is correct. So the what is actually the domain controller IP address? Domain controller IP address is oh, it's twelve, right? So let's go back there to that computer and then just put it back here. Let me just make a pause here and then clarify something. If the IP address that is taking the computer is, is coming from DACP on the server, you don't have to do this because the computer is going to find the server, the domain controller immediately. But since I'm using, since I'm using a router from my internet provider, um, I'm having some difficulties for the computer to find the server, the domain controller. And that's why I have to specify it here. So let me just click on OK. Click on OK. And then let me go back into, um, let me actually see if I can see the server. Yep, I can see data. So let me just run GP update one more time. And let me see if it is going to find it now. Okay, the process of a group policy fail of a lack of network connectivity to the domain controller. Hmm, interesting. Okay, let me actually reboot this computer. Restart. That's going to take a few seconds. It shouldn't take that long. I see computer is coming back now. 
okay computer just came back so let me go back there and then reconnect to the computer Okay, let's go straight to this PC and we can see the drive. So now the drive is there. That's how we can map a network drive. Easy and the good part is we can drive as many drives as we need. We can map as many drives as we need. Yep, now it's going to stay there so we don't have to do it manually. Um, the next step on this video is we are going to deploy a printer on the network because that's another task that we normally do, like a very, very common task. So for that, let me go to the domain controller. And actually, we are going to do that one. Uh, wait. It just went to the other screen. So let me just create another gpo that is going to be called printers and then in that way we have a very clear if somebody if i have to come back to this server in the next six months i don't have to be guessing what is this gpo about no i'm gonna be like really clear immediately oh this is users map drive so i'm going to set up another one that is going to be called printers Actually, printers deployment. I like that. Yeah, printers deployment. Okay. Printers deployment. So the first step is we need to actually install the printer on the computer. Um, for that, let's go to let's actually this is an old printer. I'm pretty sure that Windows already has the driver for that. So let me go into here and then go into hardware, service and driver, service and print, devices and printers. Add a printer. And I know that it's on the network because I tested before. And let's choose TCP IP device. Don't leave it on IPP device because it's going to try to guess and then it's going to create a WDS port deployment, which is still is going to work. But if you want to make things properly, let's just leave it on TCP IP device and then go ahead and enter the IP address. In my case, it's going to be 10.0.0.190. Okay, surprise. So it looks like it doesn't have. Oh, actually, it's there. Yeah, it's one of these. So let me just double click on it. It's connecting. Mm. It's connecting. It's installing. Okay. Well, since this is Windows Server 2022, it has like the most common drivers. So I didn't have to go out there and download a specific driver for this. What I'm doing is I'm turning on, I'm turning the it on and then we are going to test it to make sure that it works. Once we test it and make sure that it works, the next step is um, deployed with the group policy on the domain controller. So this is going to be done in the next, in the next few seconds. And as we can see, it's installed now. So let's leave it like that. Set as default printer. Print this page. Um, I see the light is blinking. Yep, and as really you can hear the noise. So it's printing now. 
Let me double check that, just to make sure it's not printing like any trash. Yep, it's perfectly working. So let me just click on finish. And now we have the printer set up. So now that we have the printer set up, let's go back to here. And then we are going to deploy the printer. Actually, let's do this printer as, let's deploy the printer per computer. And then you can see the difference on both. I mean, you can see like that actually we can do it in either one or the other. So for that, we are going to go, um, it's actually control panel or, or it's printers. Uh, no, it's actually printers. No, uh, it's actually preferences. Yeah. Windows settings. Dun, dun, dun. And it's actually here, printers. Okay. So let me just make sure that we get the right path for this. So if we decided to do per computer, this is what I did. Uh, control panel, preferences. Okay, so it looks like we can go straight. So policy. Yeah, we can go straight to preferences. So let me just go straight to preferences and then control panel and then printers. So here we can just um, set up a new TCP IP printer or local path. So that is the option if we click on, okay, if it is a local printer. Printer path. Okay. Okay, so we can either do it in two ways. We can set it up directly with the IP address or we can set it up as a local printer. And now let's go and see the options on the user. So let's actually go into preferences right straight. So if we go into preferences, we can see that is exactly the same. Oh, actually there is a share printer option. Ah, I didn't see that here. Okay, so new TCP, okay. So you know what, it's actually better per user. So let me just do share printer and then um, we can just put the path for the path, let's do this. DC. Um, do you know what? Actually, I think that I didn't share the printer. So let me go back there and then make a right click, printer properties. Um, sharing. Yeah, actually, I didn't share the printer. <laughs> okay, so we can forget this. Once the printer is installed, we need to make sure that it's shared. And for that, we are going to put a fancy name. We don't have. We don't need to have all of that. So let's put um, HP laser jet. And then let's put this together. Key. And then we know immediately what is this printer about. So let's do this. Let me just copy that. Click on apply. Click on OK. And now if we do this. Oh, it's not showing yet. Okay, now it's there. So if we do this, we can just copy the path, the whole path. How did I do that? I just went here. Um, I just went into control panel, printer properties, and then just copy the sharing name. If you copy the sharing name, and then you can just add it to the network, um, to the server name like this and then just copy the whole path. Mm -hmm. So let me just copy that and then it's going to be, I'm going to paste it here and actually I can put this, set this printer as the default and also I can choose this only if a local printer is not present. This is really important for computers that have, for example, check printers or like reception printer, reception computers or users that they have 
a specific printer for a specific function. So we can just make this as a default for everybody, except if there is a lo if a local printer is not is not present. So once that is done, let me just click on apply. Let me just click on OK. And as you can see, the printer is now here. So we just deploy the printer as a user. Ah, but this path, wait, there is something going on with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, there is something going on with that. So let me just go here. No. And then now it's looking good. Yep, now it's looking good. Okay, so the next step is we need to go to that computer, sign in as the user, and then that printer should get installed by itself. It's either that or wait until up to 120 minutes and then the GPO is going to trigger into that user and then eventually it's going to get installed. But if we don't want to do that, let's go back to that computer. Let me just run a GP update. Force. Okay. Normally take a few seconds. It always depends on how many policies it has to apply, how old is the computer. It depends on many factors. Just a few more seconds. Let me just hit enter and see if it is actually doing anything. I think it's installing the printer. That's, a, that's what it's doing. Just a few more seconds. And it should be done just in a few more seconds. Okay, computer policy update has completed successfully. That's really good. Now, let me go to um, control panel. We might have to reboot the computer, but let's check anyway. Printer and devices are actually, um, let's see, it's right here. I can see it. It says on DC. Yep. It says on DC. Okay, so now let me just reboot the computer anyway. Let's restart. That's gonna take a few seconds. Let me just pause the video and then it's gonna come back in a few seconds. And I can see computer is coming back now. So let me go here. Okay. Let's see how is that printer looking. <clears throat> okay, now let me just go to the control panel. And this is the printer. Yep, it's definitely here. So if I go to um, this is going to Google and then let me just try to print. Yep, it's gonna send it to this one. So it's definitely 
doing what it is supposed to do. It's going to be the default printer if the printer was installed and it's also the default printer. Okay, I guess this completes the video for, uh, for map drive and printer deployment. Hopefully this is going to be very useful for you because this is one of those things that I normally use every single day and it's, uh, it's really, really good to know. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Hello, hello beautiful people. Thank you so much for coming back to one more video. So as mentioned, this is going to be the last video. On this video, we are going to do two things. We are going to compare the versions of Windows Server 2022 versus um, Windows version 2018. We are going to notice that the difference are like more based on security and enterprise environments. Maybe not too much on the regular things that we normally do, but let's take a look on that. So for that, let's see, for example, oh, uh, let me start with this. The requirements for the installation, it's, um, you know, it was, I was surprised. I thought that it was going to be like more hardware requirement that was going to be needed. Processor has to be at least 1.4, 64-bit processor, uh, memory RAM, 512, 2G for service with desktop experience. Um, but I normally try not to go with the minimum because otherwise you're going to be fighting with the speed and the booting process. It's going to take forever. Disk space 32. Um, if you are going to download updates and a few things, then that disk is going to be full. So I would set minimum 64. And network requirements, an internet adapter capable of at least one gigabit per second. Yeah, that's, that's normal. UFC based system firmware that supports secure boot. Yeah, that's for the BIOS. An extra graphic device and monitor capable of BGA 1024. And this is normal for a regular computer. So as you can see, these are the requirements. And as mentioned, I wasn't surprised. Um, Actually, I was surprised the fact that the requirements were like really low. I thought they were going to be higher. Okay, so let's take a look at these two versions and let's do some compare. Windows Server 2018, Windows Server 2022. Automatic Windows Admin Center updates. It looks like it's handled on 2022. Automatic extension, um, event workspace, uh, detachable events, overview screen, configuration destination virtual switch. Um, I'm curious on this one. Configurable, configurable destination virtual switch. I might have to do some dig into this one because I thought that it was just a regular virtual switch that you can set up. But it looks like for some reason on Windows Server 2022, there is a better way to do that. Customizable columns for VM information. Action bar, live storage, migration. Uh, this might be interesting. So for that, we might have to create two VMs and then um, and then put some centralized storage and then try to move virtual machines between one and the other, like between one storage and the other one in live migration. Um, affinity and anti-span affinity rules. VM clones. Oh, it looks like we... Oh, but, I'm pretty sure we can clone on 2019 too. That's that's another thing that I need to dig on. Uh, running workspace between server, new partition tool. Oh, this is interesting. There is a new partition tool on the version 2022. Hyperbase core integrity, secure core server. Um, well, on 2000 since I have been using core server, it's kind of secure, but I guess on the 2000 22, it's even more secure for what I can see. Hardware enforced, task protection. This one is interesting to TLS support 1.2 and then it's, en it's enabled by default on the 1.3. Um, Azure supported, enabled 1.3 by default, the storage migration service supported deployment um, and management is simplified. This one also calls my attention, uncompressed image size. It looks like actually we lost some capacity on 2022 because it used to be approx 3.7 and now the approx is 2.7. Hmm, that one is interesting. Virtualized time zones, B-roll, host time zone configurable within container, group manager service, service accounts, 
it looks like we lost that one on 2022 and it used to be on 2019. Um, DRS, DSR routing. Well, as you can see, most of the things are based on security and maybe on enterprise functions. But if it is like on regular domain active directory, um, probably you are not going to notice any major differences. Okay, so now that we have clarified the difference between one version and the other one, the next step is uh, we are going to set up the ACP on that domain controller. So for that, um, let's go to the server. And we are here back on the domain on the Hyper-V. Let's connect to that domain controller. So let's send control alt delete. Let's sign in. Uh, let me just maximize this. Okay. Let me also close this and close this and also close this. And now we are going to go to the ACP. Actually, since the role is not there, we need to add it. So let's add it yep let's click on next that's the domain is correct and then let's select dacp server add feature the validation process found a problem on the server to which you want to install features click continue to install the selected feature anyway or click cancel oh not a static ip address that's fine that's because as i mentioned before uh, we have two interfaces and in a in a production environment, ideally you are gonna have an static IP address on the domain controller. Um, wait, something happened here. Oh, um, I thought that I had another one. Oh no, my mistake. There are two interfaces on the Hyper-V server, but this one only has one. And yeah, that's another point. I don't have an static IP address here, so that's completely fine. So basically, that's what it's saying. Let's just click on continue. Yep, that's fine. Just next, next. And then restart destination server manually if required. Yeah, that's fine. Do you want to allow automatic restarts? Yeah, that's completely fine. Okay, and that's going to take a few seconds, probably like a few minutes. Let's see how fast that process is going to be. Okay, it's moving on. It's actually moving pretty quick. Just a few more seconds. No. No. And just a few more seconds. And as we can see, it's almost done. View installation progress, feature installation. Configuration required installation succeeded on DC period cascas period dot local. Actually, it's not asking for reboot. So let's see how is this looking. Complete the ACP configuration. So we're going to go to next. Yep, this is gonna be um, use the following credentials. That's fine. Um, use alternative. Yep. Okay, configuration, security groups done. Please restart the DACP server service on the target computer. Okay. And as we can see, it's loading now. You know, I'm surprised that, um, I think that in the past, most of the time that when you set up, um, when you install a service, most of the time you had to restore to restart the server. Probably not, but this is, it looks like we don't have to do it on this one, or at least for this service. So the next step is we're going to create um, a scope for the DACP. So for that, let me just go here, and then we are going to, um, it's actually right here, new scope. So this is gonna be next. 
the scope is going to be, let's say that this is going to be Wi-Fi. Just an example. Let's actually call it production. Production. And then the description is going to be exactly the same. And as we can see, the name and the description are the same. Let's click on next. So we are going to enter the range of the addresses that the scope is going to distribute. So let's put something like we have to make sure that this is not going to um, is not going to overlap with the internal range that we have. So we are getting 10.0.0.1 which is a class A. So let's try with a class B. So this is going to be 172, um, 172.16.100. Let's say that this is going to be 10. And then the end is going to be 172.16.100. Let's say 50. So we have 38 machines on this, on this network. We can put 100. Yep, actually we can put 200. <laughs> it doesn't matter. So let's put 200. Okay, so now we know that we have plenty computer connection there. And here we are going to put 255. That's completely fine. The reason that I do this is because um, sometimes people ask like, oh, if you use a class B, then you can use a 255, 255, 255. Yeah, you can do that. It's the same, for example, on my computer. I have a class A and my mask it's, uh, it's actually as you can see, it's a 255-255-255-0, which allow me to connect 254 um, hosts on this network. So in theory, this is going to support the same, but the range is going to be from 10 to 200. So let's click on next. Um, type the IP address range that you want to exclude. For example, if we have a printer or if we have a server or if we have an access point. So we don't want that those IP addresses to be assigned. So let's say we are going to exclude. This is going to be 172.16.100. And then we are going to exclude from the 30 to the 35. 172.16.100.35. Okay, and then we can specify as much as we want. Let's click on next. Um, the time to leave is going to be a hour. So that means that once the address is assigned to a host, it's going to hold it for eight hours. That's completely fine. Do you want to configure the DHCP option for this scope now? Yes. Actually, let's read from the beginning. When clients obtain an address, they are given DHCP options such as the IP address of routed default gateway, DNS server, and Win settings for that scope. The settings you selected, you select here, are for this scope. And override settings configured in the server options folder for this server. Do you want to configure the DHCP option for this scope now? Yes. Okay. To add an IP address of a router used by clients enter the address below we don't have to do that we just click on next yep the domain the parent domain is going to be local the cascas local the gateway my domain ip my domain controller ip address is that one yep let me just click on next entering server ip address here enable windows client to query wings before they use broadcast most of the time we just enter the domain controller that's completely fine and then, do you want to activate this scope now? Yes, let's activate it. And then let's click on finish. Okay. So as you can see, now we have a DHCP server up and running with a range from 172.16.110 to 116.100.200. The exclusion range is 172.16.130 to the 35. And then list, this is going to show if there is any computer connected. And then that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed this course. Hopefully this is going to be useful for you. Hopefully this is going to add some values to your, some value to your career, to your daily task, to the IT amazing things that you do on your daily task. Thank you so much for joining me during these videos. Thank you so much for um, joining me on this learning process. 
and I will see you. I will see you in my next course. Thank you.